Tonight, the deadly mass shooting just days before Christmas. At least 14 people killed, more than two dozen wounded. The chilling images coming in, the gunman armed with a rifle, firing down from a university balcony overseas. Panic on the ground. Students running from the gunfire, some climbing out windows, hiding on the ledge of a building. The gunman identified a student at the university. What police say he did before targeting victims at school. Tom Sufi Burridge in Prague tonight. Here in the U.S., the major storm hitting the west at this hour. Heavy rain, flooding, and possible landslides. Rescuers pulling drivers from their cars. And following days of flooding in the northeast, crews now racing to clear roads as the holiday travel rush kicks into high gear. Rob Marciano standing by. The race for the White House, Donald Trump's Republican rivals running out of time to cut into his massive lead before the Iowa caucuses. Nikki Haley stepping up her attacks against the former president. Ron DeSantis claiming Trump's indictments have distorted the primary. Jonathan Carl reporting. The Israel-Hamas war, the U.N. now warns the entire population of Gaza is facing starvation. Children lining up for soup, clutching pots and bowls. Israel urged to agree to a new ceasefire to allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza. For the first time, Texas Governor Greg Abbott sending a private plane carrying 120 migrants to Chicago, then leaving them at O'Hare Airport as border crossings surged to record highs. Rudy Giuliani filing for bankruptcy one week after being ordered to pay nearly $150 million for defaming two former Georgia election workers. Giuliani claiming he's already millions of dollars in debt with more cases pending against him. Two men now facing charges in connection with the death of a Patriots fan following a fight in the stands during a game. Two automakers issuing major recalls why notices are going out to millions of Toyota and Honda owners. And America Strong tonight, the teacher's Christmas plea on TikTok and the responses pouring in from around the world. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening. It's great to have you with us on this Thursday night. I'm Whit Johnson in for David. And we begin with that deadly mass shooting just days before Christmas. A gunman killing at least 14 people, injuring 24 others at a university in the heart of Prague, the Czech Republic an area well known to tourists near a popular and crowded Christmas market. Police flooding the scene at Charles University, one of the oldest universities in the world. One eyewitness describing the chaos, hearing shots and police sirens, then everyone started running. Police arriving within minutes, racing toward the gunfire, weapons drawn, students trapped inside the building, some climbing out the window, perching on a ledge. Video showing the alleged gunman pacing the roof, shooting down, firing what appears to be a rifle at random. Ambulances rushing the injured to nearby hospitals. Tonight, authorities ruling out terrorism as a possible motive and say the gunman was a 24-year-old student found dead on the sidewalk. ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge leads us off from the scene in Prague. Tonight, a mid-afternoon massacre in Prague. The deadliest mass shooting here in modern history. A gunman firing down at one of the city's most iconic squares, near the famous Christmas markets, packed with tourists. At least 14 people shot dead, according to Czech officials. Around two dozen injured. At 3 p.m. local time, police saying a 24-year-old student arrived at Charles University after killing his father outside the city. This video allegedly showing the gunman pacing the roof, firing what appears to be a rifle at random. <laughs> Students trapped inside the Faculty of Arts building, some climbing out the window, even perching on the side of a building to avoid the gunfire. Armed officers swooping in within minutes, terrified students evacuating with their hands up. Scores of people sprinting across a bridge to safety. Ivo Havranek was inside when he heard gunshots. It was a couple of bangs. I didn't even realize it's a, it's a shooting. Then uh, suddenly there were students and teachers running out of the building. At 3.20, 20 minutes after the first reports of gunfire, the killer was found dead on a sidewalk. And while officials say they have ruled out terrorism as a motive, police tonight combing the university building for possible explosives, saying the suspect owned several firearms legally. Authorities discovering a large number of weapons and ammunition in the faculty building. It appears this tragedy 
could have been much worse. Tom Sufi Burridge on the scene for us tonight. And Tom, what more are we learning about the gunman? Yeah, we're at that building there is the arts faculty, a scene of horror earlier. Officials here calling this rare mass shooting unprecedented and insane, saying the gunman was inspired by a similar shooting abroad. His motive tonight, unclear. Whit. All right, Tom, with those late developments today, thank you. Back here in the U.S. to those powerful storms at the peak of holiday travel, a major system in the West already dropping up to six inches of rain in Ventura County, flooding cars and homes, and a mudslide threat in Santa Barbara with the storm now moving east. In New Hampshire, following the storm earlier this week, workers racing to repair roads and restore power before Christmas. Rob Marciano with a forecast in just a moment, but first, ABC's Matt Gutman in L.A. tonight. Tonight, life-threatening flash flooding underway in California. Torrential rains taking out this hillside in Hollywood. The flooded streets in Santa Barbara. Overnight in Ventura County, rain falling at up to three inches an hour. First responders pulling stranded families from homes. And we were there as this couple perched atop their car. That fire truck ferrying them to dry land. And was the car actually stuck? Yeah. The, the water was up to the seat level inside the car. Yeah, it started coming up to the seat level. At this senior living community, residents evacuated by tactical high water vehicles. Among them, Nancy Bemis and her two dogs. Everything, everything is destroyed. The storms in the West coming as holiday travel kicks into high gear. And also on the heels of that powerful storm that pummeled the East this week. Rivers finally receding in New Jersey. In New Hampshire, a race to shore up bridges and roads and restore power. You know, everybody would love to be warm. Uh, getting ready for, for Christmas, but these guys have been out here around the clock, and uh, we just can't thank them enough. This storm system wind is bringing five inches of rain to Southern California. This is the L.A. River. It's normally a trickle. It's ripping right now. It gives you a sense of how much moisture has come down, and those flash flood warnings remain in effect through tomorrow. Wait. Matt, thank you. Let's get right to ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. And, Rob, this threat far from over tonight. That's right, Wade. I mean, it's a lumbering storm, really slow moving. So it looks like uh, Santa Barbara to Ventura, L.A. County, Orange County, and then eventually into San Diego. And then a little bit of this kind of spits off and uh, flood watches have been extended into Phoenix. So during the day on Friday, heavy rain, maybe fl uh, flash flooding there. Mountain snows as, as this thing traverses the mountain, get into the plains on Saturday, then slows down even more. It looks like Sunday, Christmas Eve, and to Monday, Christmas Day, the central U.S. will see high impacts with this, mostly with heavy rain up and down I-35 and I-45 and into the Tennessee valley as well remaining mild here in the northeast christmas wit rob marciano for us tonight thank you now to the race for the white house just weeks until the gop caucuses in iowa where former president trump is far ahead but some of his rivals seeing an opening attempting to challenge trump more directly here's abc's chief washington correspondent jonathan carl with less than one month to go before the iowa caucuses time is running out for donald trump's opponents to take down the front runner Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is seeing a bump in the polls. And today, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who has been the most aggressive in attacking Trump, was asked if he would endorse her as the best way to stop the former president. Would you back Nikki Haley so that Trump doesn't win in New Hampshire? If she showed me that she was actually running against Donald Trump, I might. Show me how she's running against Donald Trump. For months, Haley had been reluctant to directly challenge Trump. That is beginning to change. She often warns chaos follows Trump, a line she seemed to deliver more sharply today in Iowa. Everybody knows four more years of chaos, we won't survive it. She also took issue with Trump's rhetoric and his character. I don't like the discourse that we have. I don't like the chaos and the insanity we feel like we're in. I don't like the rhetoric he gives. Character does matter and how we treat people does matter. It may take more than that. In virtually every poll, Trump's lead is as big as ever, despite the fact that he has done just six campaign events this month in Iowa and New Hampshire, nowhere near as many as his rivals. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who a year ago led Trump in some polls, but is now struggling, 
blamed Trump's legal troubles, saying the indictments have overshadowed the campaign, making it harder for other candidates to gain traction. I would say if, if I could have one thing change, I wish Trump hadn't been indicted on any of this stuff. It distorted the primary. Um, and I think it's it's been it's been that those have kind of been the main issues that have happened because it's helped last... him. Is that what you're saying? And so therefore it's, it's... Bo both that. But then it also is just crowded out, I think, so much other stuff and it's sucked out a lot of oxygen. John Carl back with us now and John DeSantis right there giving voice to the frustration a lot of these candidates are feeling as we head towards Iowa. When they're all frustrated, they've been campaigning much more than Donald Trump has. Trump has been saying countless controversial things. He's been indicted four times. And yet, throughout it all, his hold on Republican voters, if the polls are to be believed, has only grown stronger. They still have some time to change that dynamic, but with that time is running out. And just a few weeks away, John Carl for us. Thank you. Now to former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, who has filed for bankruptcy a day after a judge ordered him to start paying the $148 million he owes to two Georgia election workers in a defamation case. But even before that order, Giuliani was millions of dollars in debt, including to the attorneys who have been defending him. Here's ABC's senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky. Tonight, Rudy Giuliani, the former lawyer for Donald Trump, forced to declare bankruptcy, the latest chapter in a dramatic fall for the man once dubbed America's mayor. This is the greatest mayor our city has ever had. Rudy, come on up here. Now, under the weight of a mountain of debt, Giuliani filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. He owes two Georgia poll workers he falsely accused of ballot fraud $148 million. Just yesterday, a judge said Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss could start to collect immediately. I don't regret a damn thing. Giuliani today also acknowledging he owes nearly $4 million to lawyers, another $1 million in taxes. His bankruptcy filing also includes other debts he could incur, noting he's being sued by Hunter Biden, the president's son, who accuses him of violating his privacy. And by Dominion, maker of voting machines, Giuliani falsely claimed tipped the 2020 election away from Trump. Giuliani's bankruptcy filing does not yet wipe out that $148 million judgment to Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman. But when it does assure they won't be able to collect any money while the process plays out in court, that could take years, Wit. Aaron Katursky for us tonight. Thank you. Now to the Israel-Hamas war and the deepening humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The United Nations reporting tonight that more than half a million Palestinians are starving. The U.S. insists there have been serious negotiations about a pause in the hostilities and a hostage exchange. But Israel says there are months of fighting still ahead. ABC's Britt Klenet in Israel again tonight. Tonight, with the humanitarian crisis worsening inside Gaza, an alarming report from the UN says the entire population is facing crisis levels of hunger. Hundreds clamoring for soup. Our team in Rafa witnessing the despair, children clutching pots and pans, patiently waiting. Samia Habush telling us, if it weren't for this place, people would have slaughtered themselves. There is no gas, no electricity, there is nothing. The World Food Programme saying water is also scarce. Dozens lining up at this water tank. If you don't have water and if you don't have food, what happens to you? You starve. Aid groups saying only a fraction of the aid needed is trickling in. Today, the White House saying they are working to scale it up. You have to remember this is also a war zone. Uh, it's an area of conflict, and that greatly increases the complexity of getting humanitarian assistance in, in a safe, secure manner. Israel continuing to assault from the air and on the ground, destroying what the IDF claims to be a strategic tunnel network used by Hamas to connect the homes of its top leaders. And tonight calls for a ceasefire growing louder as a senior Israeli official saying negotiations have stopped for now. Protesters gathering outside the defense ministry in Tel Aviv as the war cabinet meets. What are you asking the government to do tonight? I'm asking them to uh, offer a deal now and bring them all back. We, we can't leave anyone there. With tonight with tensions high in the Red Sea, a U.S. official says that a naval task force to counter Houthi attacks is now being expanded to 20 countries, saying it will operate as a highway patrol of sorts uh, to protect commercial ships. Wit. All right, Brick Clannett, our thanks to you tonight. 
Now to the crisis at our southern border, an average of nearly 10,000 migrants crossing every day this week. Texas Governor Greg Abbott escalating his response. After months of busing migrants to northern cities, he's now chartered a plane to Chicago. ABC's Alex Perez is there. Tonight, amid the record number of migrant crossings along the southern border, Texas Governor Greg Abbott now flying migrants to Chicago, a charter leaving 120 asylum seekers at O'Hare. Abbott, who for months busing migrants to sanctuary cities, starting the flights after Chicago officials began impounding some of those buses. Cities like Chicago and New York, they've had it. But I don't think they truly know the magnitude of the damage caused to the United States by Joe Biden. President Biden today speaking with Mexico's president saying more must be done. According to sources, about 10,600 crossings yesterday alone in what has been a record week. Biden promising to send his top cabinet officials to Mexico in coming days to discuss solutions. With Congress stalled on immigration reform, national security spokesman John Kirby struggling to highlight what the administration is doing to curb the surge. There's lots we're doing, but there's probably more we can be doing. And, and in order to do it effectively, you got to be in full partnership with uh, Mexican authorities. In Chicago, where more than 26,000 migrants have arrived since last summer, officials are desperate for federal help. I support the call for additional resources from the federal government. That is essential. And Wick, currently there are more than 14,000 migrants here scattered at temporary shelters across the city. The nation hasn't seen a surge like this since the early 2000s. Wick. Alex Perez in Chicago, thank you. When we come back tonight, two men now facing charges in connection with the death of a Patriots fan following a fight in the stands during a game and why millions of Hondas and Toyotas are now being recalled. Tonight, two men are now facing assault and battery charges in connection with a deadly fight during a Patriots game. Authorities say John Vieira and Justin Mitchell were involved in a heated argument with Dale Mooney that turned violent. Police suggesting Mooney initiated the fight Mitchell allegedly punching him in the head and face, Mooney falling into the seats unconscious, suffering cardiac arrest event. He later died at a hospital. The wife and mother charged in an alleged murder for hire plot in the Bahamas is being allowed to return to the U.S. Lindsay Shiver has pleaded not guilty to allegations of plotting to kill her estranged husband with the help of her boyfriend and a hitman. A judge is allowing her to visit her parents in Alabama for Christmas. She must wear an ankle monitor and cannot be within 100 feet of her husband. She has to return for a pretrial hearing in February. When we come back to automakers recalling millions of vehicles and the teacher's Christmas plea, responses pouring in from around the world. Next tonight, two major automakers recalling nearly 4 million vehicles combined. Honda recalling 2.5 million because of a fuel pump defect, possibly causing the engine to fail or stall while driving. The recall involves 2017 to 2020 Hondas and Acuras. And Toyota recalling more than 1 million cars and SUVs because of a possible defect that could cause the passenger side airbag not to deploy in a crash. The recall involves 15 different Toyota and Lexus models from 2020 and 2021. Affected owners will be notified by mid-February. When we come back, the teacher revealing her students' Christmas wish list. Wait until you see the response. Finally tonight, the teacher, her students, and the Christmas spirit, America Strong. Christmas this year will be even brighter for hundreds of students at Desert Pines High School in Las Vegas, thanks to one teacher's emotional plea for help on TikTok. I work at a school where they have a wishmas program and they just sent out the spreadsheet with like the kids wish lists and um i'm and, and not only do they say what they would like but they say why it's important to them there's no way i could do it all right but maybe i could get some help from TikTok. this person said for all the wishes to be granted slippers i would like some black slippers to protect my feet from the cold Sherry Guy has been teaching for 15 years. Many of the students at her school come from low-income families. I'm a teacher for a reason. I, I, I consider my students, my kids. 
That post going viral, teachers and strangers around the world donating enough to fulfill Christmas wishes for more than a thousand students. It was just tears, just heartbreak for some of the things that the kids were asking for. They were so selfless in their requests. The spirit of kindness and a holiday to remember. It means more than just the item that they had in their hands. They were valued not only by their own teachers or their own school community, but potentially by thousands of people that they may never meet, but now they know that they've been recognized and shown love. And so many people making a difference. I'm Whit Johnson in New York. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.